Please, Lord, help me save one more. If you're familiar with that line, it's from the movie Hacksaw Ridge, the protagonist of the movie, Desmond Doss. He's a soldier and he goes to great lengths in the Battle of Okinawa to save fellow soldiers who were wounded on the battlefield. Hacksaw Ridge was based on real events and it tells the story of how Doss, a pacifist, insists on serving even though he wouldn't carry a rifle. For his religious convictions, Doss faces much harassment and adversity, which includes hazing and a court-martial. But eventually, he becomes the hero of the story because of his valor. During the Battle of Okinawa, Doss rescued 75 wounded soldiers by lowering them down a cliff with a rope. And then the unit that was below and receiving them was stunned because more kept coming, all of the men whom they thought were dead. In the movie, Doss is exhausted, his hands are bloody, and his body is bruised, but after each soldier he saves, he prays. Please, Lord, help me save one more. Doss went to great lengths to do what he thought God wanted him to do. We're in the final week of our message series based on Matthew Kelly's book, Holy Moments. And if you've been with us in recent weeks, you know what a holy moment is. We've been saying that a holy moment is a single moment where you open and make yourself available to God by setting aside your self-preference and then doing what you think God wants you to do. Some holy moments are easy, like picking up a piece of trash that somebody left on the ground, but some holy moments really cost you. And that's when you have to go to great lengths to do them. Like Desmond Dost, who had to endure so much mistreatment and shame before he became the hero. Over the past couple weeks, I've loved hearing from many of you about the holy moments that you've had in your lives and the different ways that you've experienced them. And for me, it's been good to consider the difference in my own life between the holy and the unholy moments. For instance, somebody recently got me really annoyed. And I was about to say something uncharitable, and I thought it would get a laugh, but then the thought came to me, Gerald, you don't need to say anything at all. I'll tell you, it was hard. <laughs> but I kept my mouth shut, and it became a holy moment. <laughs> and maybe that's the point with setting aside our self-preference. It's not what we naturally want to do. It takes effort. But when we put in the effort, so much good is possible. Because here's the paradox. It's in going against our self-will, our self-preference, it's against going against our self-preference that our fulfillment and our happiness are found. And the reason for this is quite simple. The reason for this is because there is no lasting happiness or fulfillment without love. And what is love? Love, if it's real, means that you give of yourself. And giving of yourself means sacrifice by going against your self-preference. You know, based on our ideals, we might want to go to great lengths for the people and the things that we love, but there are distractions that get in the way, like, you know, for me, endless scrolling on my phone or my love of comfort or so many other things that trip me up on a daily basis and that if I were to give in to them completely would ultimately lead to a life that is empty and that lacks meaning. Similarly, in the movie Hacksaw Ridge, there were many people telling Doss to take the easy way out by quitting or by compromising his beliefs. But he stood firm. And it's the same thing in our lives. There are so many voices that we hear that want to allure us off our course and so many voices that would keep us from being everything that God has created us to be. And some of them are so subtle, we might not 
even realize it's happening. In our gospel today, Jesus teaches us the eight attitudes that we need to create the holy moments that keep us on our path. That from the beginning of the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus is at the beginning of his public ministry. His crowds are flocking to hear his words. They want to experience his miracles. And a lot of folks begin to be his followers. So he calls them to himself. He sits down and he begins to teach. He teaches by giving the Beatitudes, which are the ingredients of happiness that are vastly different from what we might hear in the world. What we might hear in music, read in magazines or blogs, or see on social media. So to achieve them, we have to go to great lengths. The first three Beatitudes, blessed are the poor in spirit, blessed are those who mourn, and blessed are the meek, they reveal faults in us that need to be corrected if we're to be perfect. Spiritual arrogance, pride, and the desire for pleasure. The second th three beatitudes, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, blessed are the merciful, and blessed are the clean of heart. Talk about the virtues that regulate our relations with God, our neighbor, and ourselves. Justice, mercy, and purity. The final two beatitudes, blessed are the peacemakers, and blessed are those who hunger and thirst, or excuse me, blessed are those who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness. They encourage us who are Jesus' followers to be generous in spreading the gospel in peace. And if you've watched the news recently like I have, you know it's so necessary. There's so much darkness, it seems, coming our way. There's the escalating violence in Ukraine. There's gun violence in our own country. There's police brutality. There is you know, the tragedy with the family in Duxbury. So much darkness. But if we live the Beatitudes, we become signs of light, light that shines in the darkness. And if we live the Beatitudes, they assure us that we will be rewarded in God's kingdom for everything that we have to suffer for doing so. Each of the eight Beatitudes invite us to go to great lengths by setting aside our self-preference and then doing what we think God is asking us to do. And all of these things happen in holy moments. No matter what it costs you to have a holy moment, it's worth it. No matter what great length you have to go to to have a holy moment, it's worth it. Why is it worth it? Well, first, because God is never outdone in generosity. So if you are open and, and generous in making yourself available to him, you are going to know God's abundant blessing. Second, to be blessed means to be happy, not just in the emotional sense, but happy because you are, on a, you are in a fortunate situation. That is, you're on the path that leads to God's consolation. And third, this is something that we, we talk about in church, but we should think about it more and more. We are not meant to live just for the here and the now. Brothers and sisters, we are destined to live for eternity. So when we get to heaven and we look back on everything that we've had a sacrifice in life, it is going to seem like nothing compared to everything that God has given us. And then fourth and finally, as the example of Desmond Doss shows, so many other people depend on us when it seems unlikely. Holy moments are not always easy, and sometimes we miss the opportunities we have to create holy moments. Often discouragement rears its ugly head and we begin to feel like our wheels are stuck in the mud. But we should never give in to discouragement because the impact and the value of holy moments are like icebergs. And we only ever see the tip of the iceberg. 
most of it is beneath water and it's hidden. And that's the impact of our good actions. We only see a little bit of it. I want to wrap up this series by giving a word of encouragement. Holy moments do not always come naturally, but when we live them, they create momentum in our lives. And when you open and when you make yourself available to God by setting aside your self-preference, incredible things are possible Incredible things that have a multiplying effect. Holy moments about living as God wants you to live. And as the Beatitudes promise, living as God wants you to live brings happiness both in this life as well as in the life to come. So, for yourself... for others, for God. To what lengths are you willing to go to live a holy moment?